In this video, we're going to talk about how clouds form, and we're going to learn about the 10 basic cloud types that we see in our atmosphere. Our first step of forming clouds is to have some form of condensation occur. And this is, again, where we're going to have water vapor changing states into a liquid, just like we saw on the side of that really cold bottle of soda. But in order to do this, we need a condensation surface. We need all of that water vapor to have a solid that it can condense onto. So out in nature, this is pretty common. It can be anything on the ground, whether it's a blade of grass, a car window, our house, just about any solid surface that's on the ground. But even inside of our air, there are tiny solid pieces. And these are particulate matter. You might have heard about poor air quality days when there's a lot of particulate in our atmosphere. These are just tiny solid particles. They can be things like dust, smoke, salt from our oceans, just anything that is a solid and very, very tiny inside. And we're gonna see that the water molecules inside of that water vapor, the gaseous water, are going to be able to absorb onto the side of that solid, that condensation nuclei, and begin to condense into a liquid. Unfortunately, unlike the cartoons most of us watched when we were younger, clouds are not these lovely, bouncy pillows of water. Instead, they're made up of millions and millions of minute, very tiny water droplets, and in some, case, in some cases, just really tiny crystals of solid ice. So if you were to jump out of a plane into a cloud, you're not going to bounce off. You're just going to go straight through and get very wet in the process. But we term our clouds based on where they are in our atmosphere, whether they're high, medium, or lower to the ground, and also based on their form. What exactly do these clouds look like? So we're gonna have four major classifications based on the form or the shape of the cloud. Our first are gonna be our cirrus clouds. These are really high, they're white, and they're thin. They kind of remind me of ribbons. Our second type is called a stratus cloud, and this is going to be like a sheet or a layer that covers a lot of the sky. Think about those really thick sheets of gray clouds before it rains. We also have cumulus clouds, which are globular cloud masses. This is what we see in the image to the left. And then finally, we have our nimbus clouds. Once we see pictures of these, it'll make a lot more sense. These are the ones that produce most of our precipitation. They're going to be our storm clouds. But in addition to the shape, remember, we also want to know what height our cloud is. So based on whether they are high clouds, middle clouds, or low clouds, we're going to give them different root words at the beginning of their name. So if we're looking at really high clouds, the, the clouds that are above 6,000 meters above our surface, we're going to call these some type of cirrus cloud. Whether it's cirrostratus, cirrocumulus, we're going to start off the name of the cloud with cirrus, which is just going to tell us it's a high cloud above 6,000 meters. If we're looking at a cloud lower than this, it's probably going to be a middle cloud a cloud that we're going to find between 2,000 and 6,000 meters above the ground surface. And with these middle clouds, we're going to give them the front root word of alto. And alto just means middle. If you've ever been in a choir, alto is like the middle range. But then we also have our low clouds, the clouds that are really low to the ground and are below 2,000 meters. And we start these clouds' names with the term stratus. We're going to see these with our stratocumulus and our nimbostratus. And remember, nimbostratus are our precipitation clouds. So nimbus means rainy. Doesn't make a lot of sense with the Harry Potter movies with the Nimbus 3000, but okay. This chart shows us the elevation of our clouds as well as the purest the appearance or form. So this can help us figure out the name of each of our cloud types. Here on the left along our y-axis we have the height of the clouds and along the x-axis we have the shape. Here on the very right we have a cloud that's called a cum cumulonimbus cloud. 
And this is a really unique cloud. This is one, actually the only one, that can go from low all the way to really high altitudes. And we call these clouds a vertical development because vertically they're taller than any other type of cloud. But these produce a lot of our really intense rainstorms and especially a lot of our thunderstorms. But when we're looking at this, we'll see that all of the high altitude clouds are termed cirrus at the beginning. When we look at our actual cirrus form, you'll notice that the only one is our cirrus that are very high. These are the wispy ones that remind me kind of like ribbons. If we look at our middle altitude clouds, here we'll see they're alto. And alto just means middle. Our alto stratus is going to be a middle cloud that forms sheets. Whereas our alto cumulus is going to be middle, but it's going to form those little globs of clouds. And then we also have our low-lying clouds at the bottom here. We don't have any low-lying cirrus clouds. Those only exist in high altitudes. But we do have nimbostratus, the sheets of gray clouds that produce storms. But we also have our just normal sheet called our stratus that doesn't produce rain. And then one of my favorite types of clouds are our stratocumulus. I think these are probably the prettiest because they're very low and there are lots of small kind of circular clouds. This slide and the next one might make things a little bit easier because we're going to look at actual photos of these different types of clouds. Starting up here in D, these are our alto cumulus clouds. Alto tells us it's a middle elevation. And cumulus, we can see these little kind of balls, like cotton balls of cloud. Over here at C, we have cirrostratus. These are our high kind of sheet-like that generally form around our sun. Down here at B, we're looking at our cirrocumulus. These are going to be our really high globular clouds. You can see that they're much higher in elevation than our alto cumulus above it. And then finally over here with A, we have our cirrus clouds. And these are the really high elevations that are kind of like wispy ribbons. Here we're just looking at four more. Up here with E, this is our alto stratus. This is a sheet cloud that's found in the middle of our atmosphere. Over here at G, we're looking at a cumulus cloud. These are just our average good weather clouds. They're found in lower layers of our atmosphere. But the bottom two are the ones that are responsible for precipitation and storms. Here on the left, we have our nimbostratus. These are those dark gray clouds that bring a lot of rain. And here on the right is our cumulonimbus. This is that cloud of vertical development that goes from really low elevations up to really high elevations of our atmosphere. And these are the clouds that can produce the most severe weather, whether we're talking about hail, um, tornadoes, or even hurricanes. They all form from cumulonimbus clouds.